All right, folks, so today, in fact, we are actually going to be talking about the hydraulic radius, the efficiency of a river, as well as the drainage density. All right, this video is aimed at showing the, the relationship, all right, amongst all three of them, hydraulic radius, the efficiency of a river, as well as the drainage density. So let us begin quickly. Now, first and foremost, we have to ask ourselves, what is, in fact, the hydraulic, the hydraulic radius? All right, now... Um, we will have a diagrammatic view to give us a proper understanding of what it looks like. But in terms of a definition of the hydraulic radius, it is the ratio of the cross-sectional area to that of the wetted perimeter. Okay? All right. This arrow points at the river's surface. All right. I apologize for this crappy handwriting. Um, these are, in fact, the sides of the river. All right, we have the depth. We can focus on the depth of the river. And we could also be focusing on the width of the river channel. All right. Now, this area in red, shaded in red here, all right, as I just said, this is in fact the area. All right, this is the cross sectional area. All right. Now, students, the sides of the river, referring to this region, we have side A, we have side B, and we have the side C. All right, when you add all of them up, for example, A plus B plus C, all right, that will actually give you the wetted perimeter. Okay? Now, students, this should be taken into consideration because the hydraulic radius is, in fact, a very significant um, calculation, a very significant tool in terms of understanding the efficiency of a river. But before we even jump to that, let us do a nice little example here. Assuming this particular channel, both sides, right, both the right as well as the left side is in fact the same depth, all right? The cross-sectional area is equal to obviously side multiplied by side, all right? Which is technically referring to the, the depth multiplied by the width. Okay, so technically, 3 multiplied by 5, which is 15. So this is 15 square feet because the units appear to be in feet, right? I was going to use this unit as a nice little example. So the cross-sectional area for this particular stream is, in fact, 15 square feet. Now, what if you were to um, calculate the um, wetted perimeter? Now, folks, the wetted perimeter is, in fact, the sum of all the sides. For instance, just like when you calculate the perimeter in maths, all right, the wetted perimeter would be equal to this side, which is E, plus this side, which is B, as well as this side, which is C. Do you know why we consider it to be the wetted perimeter? Because of the fact that this area would actually be in close proximity or in direct contact with the water. The same applies to the width and also the same will be applicable to this side as well. All right, so this is a very, very important consideration. Therefore, the wetted perimeter would actually be 3 plus 5 plus 3 again, which is equal to 5 and 3 is 8, 8 plus 3 is 11, 11 feet. So the wetted perimeter happens to be 11 feet. So keep that in mind for one minute. All right, so I just reshuffled some of the little clutter from the screen. So now we have the cross-sectional area and the wetted perimeter. The cross-sectional area is, in fact, 15 all right, square feet divided by the wetted perimeter is, in fact, 11 feet. All right. Now, obviously, you know, the, um, there will be a cancellation in feet. The unit for the hydraulic radius will be uh, in the form of feet, not feet squared or not, uh, yeah, not feet squared. Okay. So 15 divided by 11. And that would be 1.36 feet. So the hydraulic radius is, in fact, 1.36 feet. Now, don't... You remember something for me, the units could either be in the form of feet, it could be in the form of meters, 
all right it could be any form of centimeters if you so wish all right whatever units you utilize make so you make sure the, uni the units themselves are in fact uniform all right you cannot have feet over inches or inches over feet no try to ensure that you have the same um units all right applicable all right so this particular example we have the hydraulic radius being calculated all right now i'm going to give you a question from the past papers all right from the csec um past papers and let's go through this quickly all right folks so this question was in fact taken from the 2011 keep geography um which is in fact the caribbean advanced proficiency examination um geography unit one module two all right we have question 4a study table one which shows the measurement of three rivers then answer the questions that follow we have river a b and c we are actually given the width in meters we are given the depth and they also granted us the um, sorry gave us the area so question question 4a part one says calculate the hydraulic radius of each of the three rivers we have a b and c let us do that now all right let's begin quickly now the area is actually 26.6 meters squared or square meters divided by the wetted perimeter now students when we draw the river in the past we realized that there are in fact two areas two sides which will represent the depth we have this side and we also have this side all right and then we have the width okay so technically the wetted perimeter will be the two depths so that is 0 0.7 plus 0 0.7 plus 38 all right let us see what we got okay so the hydraulic radius for river a is it is approximately 0 0.68 meters all right let's go through quickly with river b all right the cross-sectional area is in fact 16.2 all right square meters divided by the width um, is 18 meters the depth is 0 0.9 therefore the wetted perimeter will actually be 0 0.9 plus 0 0.9 plus 18 meters all right all right so based on the calculation here the area would actually be 0 0.818 sorry not the area the um the hydraulic radius would actually be 0 0.8.8 um, which is approximately 0 0.82 meters all right, let's do um, River B quickly. I'm sorry, I actually meant um, River C. All right, so the cross-sectional area is actually 20 divided 20 square meters. The width is actually 10, all right, plus two depths, which would be 2 plus 2, all right, which is equivalent to saying 20 divided by 14, which is equal to 1.4. 428 meters which is approximately 1.43 all right from this information here we can see river a in fact um has the lowest all right of the hydraulic radius in comparison to all the um, rivers all three rivers river c has the highest value which is 1.43 all right river b is 0.82 now part two of the question asks which of the three rivers, A, B, or C, is the most efficient? Now, folks, before we even understand that particular question, we have to understand what is the efficiency of a river, all right? And by definition, the efficiency of a river is the, its, its ability to transport load as well as discharge, all right? All right, from this image, we can see this is, in fact, the river, all right? And assuming the river is, in fact, moving in this particular pathway, all right? um the materials at the base right we are actually seeing boulders we are seeing sediments particulates and whatnot these are materials which are found on the um materials found on the river's bed all right materials on the river's bed again i apologize for the handwriting all right river's bed and this is important because the river's bed is actually below the water level and there are in fact many materials some of which can be very coarse dense heavy some of which can also be relatively loose like sediments of sand and clay and stuff like that all right that is also termed as the bed load or the the load right whether it be the load or the bed load of a river that is exactly what it is 
Now, in this particular definition of efficiency of a river, we also have, apart from load being transported, we can also have discharge. What is the discharge? By definition, right, the discharge refers to the volume of water that basically passes a particular point along a stream, right, within a given period of time. All right, students, so discharge is in fact calculated by the cross sectional area, right, of the particular stream multiplied by the velocity. Um, the unit for discharge is in fact um, cubic meter, right, per second. All right, it is also referred to as cumex. Um, we have m to the power of 3 per second, or I can see at the bottom here, m to the power of 3, s to the power of minus 1. It's the exact same thing. From the information that we have here, river C, right, is in fact the most efficient of all. All right, the reason for that is because the hydraulic radius is a perfect, um, what a unique um, estimation, which determines at some point the efficiency of a stream. All right, the higher the hydraulic radius, all right, it is, the, it is in fact expected that the efficiency would also increase. All right, so there is in fact a positive correlation between the hydraulic radius and the efficiency of that particular river. All right, so students, look at these two particular um, streams for a minute, right? This one is actually deeper, which is E, and this one is actually shallow or shallower. All right. When you have a greater volume of water, right, in contact with the size of the channel, which is technically the wetted perimeter, all right, that means you will actually have a lot more friction taking place, which will reduce the flow of water, thereby negatively impacting upon the efficiency. But this particular stream, which is at E, right, the wetted perimeter for this is in fact much less in comparison to B. So this region here, there is less friction associated with the sides of the channel. So there's a deeper body of water which facilitates expeditious flow of water along the path. All right, so E is in fact much more efficient than B. Now the concept of drainage density is in fact something which is very important. We are not talking about individual streams. We are actually talking about a multitude of streams simply in a given environment or a given area. This given area is actually referred to as the drainage basin. All right. We will talk about this a little bit later on in another video. All right. And I want to understand um, with respect to the stream themselves, these uh, streams merge into a main channel, which eventually moves across the landscape. All right. And drainage densities, drainage basins, and of course, their densities will in fact be impacted by the topography. Um, the rock structure, uh, even the vegetation, a wide variety of different things. We will talk about that in a different video. Now, in terms of calculating right, the drainage density, we must bear in mind, uh, it refers to the total length of all streams in this particular basin, all right, divided by the area. All right, so the formula is actually the total length all right, of all streams in that the in the drainage basin divided by the area of the drainage basin all right students that will give us a, a, a numerical value of course all right these streams um, most often you can measure them it will i mean drainage basins are actually relatively large all right you must have the same units above and below Right, the area must actually be, if it is a meter squared or square meters, the length must also be in meters. All right, just like a mathematical um, calculation that you are supposed to do. So this is a mathematical, mathematical representation. So um, drainage density is equal to the length of all the streams divided by the area of the basin. All right, and I want you to always remember this. We will come back on this. Um, we will touch this again, and we will highlight in another video, the concepts associated with elongated basins, um, even round basins, as well as we will talk about the different size, I'm sorry, sizes, all right, associated with specific types of basins as well, and how they are in fact um, impacting upon the environment, depending upon the flood uh, proneness as, as well. All right, so we could use this as a nice little guide. So I'll stop here for today, and we'll continue this um, particular content in a different video highlighting more 
in terms of the aspects surrounding the drainage basin and others. All right, students, any questions, feel free, let me know. We'll keep good. Bye.